Hi there, I'm Diane Coleman and this short video is about how foreign policy is formulated and implemented in Australia. Firstly, let's begin by figuring out what foreign policy is. What are the aims of foreign policy? Foreign policy is the instrument by which the government seeks to further Australia's goals and ambitions, the benefits to Australia's national interest through interaction with our neighbours. These interactions take the form of political relations, where heads of government and ministers engage publicly on a number of important issues. Australia also furthers its interests through social interactions with our important international partners. We particularly like sporting events since we are so good at it, but also through the arts and other events. We also interact through trade and investment and through military cooperation, alliances and joint exercises. I guess you are starting to get an idea of some of the main elements of foreign policy. Having a military is an interaction with other states, showing our intention to defend ourselves, as is declaring our military allegiances. Security allows a state to survive as an independent, sovereign state, so security is often seen as the prime national interest. In addition, economic growth allows us to beef up our security, but is an important goal in its own right for our society. So much effort is put into formulating and implementing foreign policy designed to enhance Australia's prosperity. Australia is also a signatory to a number of UN conventions. We signed up to climate change agreements and we have security treaties and trade agreements which we are obliged to adhere to. The advancement and protection of human rights is also something other democratic states seek to promote. One of the ways we do this is through the provision of foreign aid, which, notwithstanding some humanitarian concerns, is provided primarily in order to further Australia's national interest. Who comes to this country for work or love or whatever for a while or to stay permanently is also part of foreign policy making. We therefore see that Australia's foreign policy includes a number of separate but interrelated policy agendas in the areas of defence and security, trade, foreign investment, international commitments and foreign aid. It is important to understand then that a prudent and pragmatic Australian foreign policy can therefore provide a basis on which to secure Australia's interests into the future. Well, that's how it's meant to work anyway. Let's now turn to how foreign policy is formulated in Australia. Firstly, power over external affairs is vested in the executive. This means that it is the Prime Minister and Cabinet who are responsible for formulating foreign policy. In practice, though, it is the Prime Minister who makes most decisions on matters relating to foreign policy, usually in concert with a very active Foreign Minister. The reason for this is the recognition that foreign policy making requires the ability to respond rapidly to changing contexts with speed, coherence and the greatest possible degree of manoeuvre. Foreign policy issues are also often very sensitive and being under the glare of public scrutiny may not be conducive to achieving the best outcomes. So successive leaders continue to claim. So, the Prime Minister is largely responsible for foreign policy making and as such, a number of factors can and most definitely do have a significant influence on the direction this may take. The first of these is the general Australian worldview, which mixes in with the political orientation of the Prime Minister, that is, whether they are Labour or Liberal, and the traditions that apply to these. Domestic politics is most definitely also one of the most important drivers of foreign policy and to become a political football for electoral success in liberal democracies. Successive Australian government's policy difficulties with respect to refugees is a key example of this. There's the necessity to have a balance with our international obligations under treaties like the UN Convention on Refugees. Whether other states are meeting their obligations is important too, and the actions of other states like what to do when North Korea tests nuclear missiles. And the media also has a significant influence on all public policy, including that related to foreign affairs. This is particularly so in Australia, which has one of the highest concentrations of media ownership in the world. 
Responding too readily to populist calls to arms, often through megaphone diplomacy, can threaten wider interests and important long-term international relationships, bringing us to how to go about foreign affairs to bring the best outcomes for Australia. As with other countries, the way foreign policy is implemented in Australia is through the conduct of international diplomacy. In simple terms, diplomacy is the practice of negotiating between representatives of nation states, but the subtleties and nuances of many complex international issues means that in many respects, diplomacy really is an art form. Sometimes diplomatic efforts are done bilaterally, that is, between two countries, and other times diplomacy can be multilateral, like the UN or ASEAN, climate change summits and the like. DFAT officials negotiate all kinds of agreements with other countries, free trade agreements, treaties of co cooperation, etc. These are professional staff with their eye on Australia's long-term policy goals. And of course, there's the diplomatic staff in Australian embassies all over the world, building relationships and generally working to protect and further Australia's national interest. Sometimes this means a lot of backpedalling to smooth things over when the PM takes a massive detour or puts their foot in it. Some leaders have a better feel for international relations than others. With so much power vested in the executive, their willingness to consult with the experts can really make or break us. Maybe one day they'll be listening to you. Thank you.